Hey, welcome to another tutorial. This time we're going to go over the character teleporter component to make easy teleporters using just components. Let's get started and I'll show you what we're building. So in front of me here I have a teleporter which is uh, green invaded and uh, transparent and when I walk through it you see that I'm teleported over to this living room area here um, and I, uh, I'm far away from where I am so I've been teleported. That is the um, setup that we're going to recreate, but we're going to build it over here from scratch so that you can see what we're doing. Let me just close that and let's get started. So I'm going to face this way, um, moving away from the, the living room just a little bit and get started. So we're going to need a, just a dev tool tip for this one. And we're going to start by creating a 3D model box. And that's because um, teleporters act on sort of doorways or passageways, tunnels, etc., archways, whatever you'd like. It just has to be a collider that you collide with for the character teleporter to work. So I'm going to change this box using the green guides to it resembles kind of like a, a doorway of some kind. Let's hop into fly here. Hop through the ground here. Gonna make it a little bit bigger vertically as well. There we go. That's more teleporter looking. Now we need to configure this box that acts like a teleporter. So to do that we're going to inspect the box. I'm going to remove the grapple component as we don't want it to be moved. And then we're going to go to the box collider here and we're going to change this from type static to type trigger. This needs to be type trigger as that's how the character teleporter works. It needs to work on a trigger collider. So I'm going to go ahead to attach component and go to commotion, interaction, character teleporter, and that's the character teleporter component added. Now we're going to leave a lot of these options the same and default because we're not going to play with them today. They do do some crazy stuff and I'll go over some of them, but uh, probably not all of them. Let's get started. So to um, add, make the teleporter work, we need to add what's called an exit. So if I hit add on this exit list, you'll see that we get a exit list uh, with a first entry here. And uh, there's a number of properties here. We're not going to worry about any of them for now except teleport exit. Teleport exit means a slot, which is where we want to exit the teleporter from. To create a teleport exit, what we're going to do is we're going to turn around and we're going to go back to our living room and we're going to create a slot for the exit of the teleporter. To do this, I'm going to use my developer tooltip here and I'm going to go to create new empty object. I'm going to select this empty object and I'm going to position it how I want to. I'm also going to rotate it. Now I'm going to rotate it so that the X arrow is facing towards the living room. And that's because we entered the teleporter facing the X direction. So we'll exit the teleporter facing the X direction as well. That could get complicated with complex rotations. If you struggle with that, please do let me know and I'll see if I can help you out. We're just trying to keep things simple for a tutorial here. So now if I go back to the directional gizmo here, you'll see that the X is pointing this way and um, facing towards this living room setup that we've got. I'm going to rename the empty object to exit. And I'm going to grab this inspector and head back over to the teleporter. Now back over at the teleporter, I'm going to grab the word exit and drop it into teleport exit. We're done with the exit, so let's close that. Put that to one side and we're actually done. We can walk through and it will teleport us straight to the living room. There are a couple more things that we might want to do um, with a basic teleporter setup. Uh, if you go ahead and see the teleport exit velocity, if you just check that, it will default everything to zero. What this means is no matter how fast I run at the teleporter, um, it will slow me down and stop me when I exit the teleporter. I always advise doing that because teleporting can be jarring, um, and this will make sure that you just uh, come out of it naturally. You'll also see that I fall down a little bit. So I'm going to adjust the, um, let's find it in the inspector. I'm going to adjust the uh, exit position to be just a little bit lower. There we go. That was almost seamless. Let me swap to third person back to smooth POV for a second. There is a little bug with um, smooth POV sometimes where it can see inside my face. And there you go. That's completely seamless. So adjust the height and rotation of things until your um, target position is seamless. The other thing that you can do with the character teleporter is you can actually define a sort of random teleport. And that's the other thing I'm going to show you today. If I add another exit here and I say um, go over here and over here we're going to just create a, uh, let's create a cone. And this is so that we know that we're at the other exit and I create an empty object here. 
And again, I'm going to go ahead and point the Z towards the cone. And I'm going to label this exit 2. Drag this inspector back over to the teleporter. And then add another tele... Oh, not that one. I bought my button. And now I've got two exits. So I can add exit 2 to teleport exit. Now I've got two exits set up, and they both have the same weight. It means that it will randomly choose between this ex uh, between that exit and that exit on where to send me. So when I go through here, there's a 50-50 chance I'll go to the living room, and a 50-50 chance that I'll go over to the cone. Let's see where we go. Oh, there's the cone this time. Let's go back and try again. And it's the living room. That lets you do a randomized teleport. You can also edit these weights and make things less or more likely. So uh, they should add up to one. I believe you can go higher than one, but I've only really experimented adding up to one. So if I say I want the um, living room to have a 25%, I can chance, I can do 0 0.25. And I want the cone to have a 75% chance, I can do 0.75. Those both add up to one. And now you'll see that most of the time here, I'll go to the cone. So I'll do another pass through and you see that we should statistically go to the cone and then kind of rarely, 25% of the time, we should end up in the living room. I might not be able to do it. We'll do one more pass, otherwise the video is going to get too long. There we go. There are some other options with the um, teleporter exits that you can do. You can do a parent after teleport. That is useful if you've got like a ship or a, an object that's moving that you want to parent them to. Um, it will ensure that they uh, stay on it. So say you have a ship moving forwards, you can add a teleport exit on that ship and have parent to the ship set so that when they are parented to the ship, they just continue moving along with the ship. That's it for teleporters. Um, there's a lot of um, other options here that I haven't personally tried out myself, so I'm not going to go over them, but feel free to play around with them. Drop some comments below if you've got any suggestions, hints, or questions, and I will see you next time. That's character teleporters for you. Bye-bye.